Yarny. Hello, welcome to another Yarny video. If you're starting in crochet, definitely stay tuned because I'll be going through 11 common mistakes made by beginners that seems to make crochet difficult. By knowing how to avoid these easy mistakes, I'll save you a ton of frustrations along the way. Before we start, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Number one, not properly learning to see stitches. Understanding the anatomy of a stitch can be super, super helpful in your crochet journey. It influences the accuracy and consistency of your work. To help yourself see the stitches, hold your work in a well-lit area and look for the V-shaped strands on top of a stitch. Practice different stitches and observe how different they look, which will help you along the way and be useful for you to identify if any mistakes were made. Number two, crocheting too tightly. This is a common mistake made by beginners. A few things that can indicate that you're crocheting too tightly are when you start to feel discomfort on your wrist, hand, and fingers because excessive tightness causes tension which puts strain on your hands and fingers. Other signs, such as having difficulty crocheting, for example, if you find it difficult to insert the hook in the stitches, or if you find your project to be very stiff or stitches to be uneven, those are all signs that might be crocheting too tightly. In order to avoid this issue, make sure you relax your grip on the yarn and the hook and always pay attention at how tightly you're wrapping your yarn around the hook. It doesn't need to be super tight to do stitches properly. Make sure you practice consistently and eventually you will find the perfect tension for your yarn. Number three, crocheting only on the front loop by mistake. This mistake can result in beginners not having a proper understanding of what a stitch looks like, which is another common mistake as we just mentioned in number one. Crocheting in the front loop is acceptable if the pattern calls for it or if you're doing your foundation chain at the beginning of a project. Other than that, you should always, always make sure to crochet in the full stitch, which is both strands of the V formation. This means your hook must always go under the two strands of the V shape. Make sure you analyze the stitches and see both strands before inserting your next stitch to avoid this mistake. Number four, not knowing how to count the foundation chains correctly when working in rows. This is essential for your project to turn out great and have even stitches. Simply remember that the knot from your slip knot and the loop around your hook do not count as chains. You will simply be counting the V shapes in between your slip knot and the loop on your hook as chains. Each V shape is one chain. Number five, not crocheting enough stitches or too many stitches. This mistake can result in having a project that is funky looking with uneven areas. Make sure to always keep track of your stitches. The best way to do so is to use a stitch marker at the beginning of a round or row to indicate the first stitch of your round or row. Then make sure to count your stitches at the end of a round or row to ensure you're on track. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can definitely use a paper clip or just a little piece of yarn. It's as simple as that. Number six, not keeping track of rows and rounds. Naturally, keeping track of your rows or rounds is as important as keeping track of your stitches. Having too many or not enough rows or rounds can impact the look of your project significantly. Make sure to regularly count how many rows or rounds you have worked on to ensure you are on track. Number seven, not using the correct yarn weight or crochet hook. Using the right yarn weight and crochet hook is important to ensure your project looks like what you wanted it to look like. If you use a smaller yarn than what it's called for in a pattern, your project can look smaller than the actual size of the project and vice versa. Similarly, making sure the right crochet hook size is used for a specific yarn weight will make sure your project and stitches look better and also helps you crocheting more easily. 
For example, you don't want to be using a super small hook that can't even grab onto the yarn properly. By the way, I've made a great video on the topic of yarn weights and crochet hooks that you can watch on the Yarny channel. I'll be linking this video down below for you guys. Number eight, not weave in the ends of a project. This step is so, so important to make sure your stitches don't unravel. There's nothing more disheartening than seeing your hard worked project falling apart. So don't overlook this important, important step. Always leave a tail of at least five to six inches long at the end of a project in order to make a few knots and weave in the ends to secure your project. Number nine, not learning to read crochet patterns. Learning to read crochet patterns will open you to an infinite number of possible projects you can make. It's really not as daunting as it looks. The most common mistakes for beginners trying to read patterns is mistaking US versus UK terms or when they don't make sure to read the whole pattern through before embarking on a project. I've also made a tutorial explaining how to read a crochet pattern that I'll be linking down below for you guys. Number 10, not understanding turning chains when working in rows. Remember that when working in rows, you always want to work from the right to the left. Therefore, when you are done with a row, you need to do chains and turn your project around. The chains before you turn the project is what we call turning chains. The turning chains are used to provide height for the stitch you are doing. By this, I mean there's a difference in height if you look at a single crochet, a half double crochet, a double crochet, or a treble crochet stitch. For example, a treble crochet stitch obviously has more height than a single crochet stitch. A good rule to remember is that if you are doing single crochet, you will do one turning chain in between each rows. For a half double crochet stitch, you will do two turning chains in between each rows, then three turning chains in between each rows if you're working on double crochet stitches, and four turning chains in between each rows if you're doing treble crochet stitches. Number 11, not learning to crochet in the round. Crocheting in the round opens you to a whole new world in crochet beyond doing rows. You can make so many nice projects when you learn crocheting in the rounds, such as amigurumis or simply just making a round placemat, for example. The first step to learning how to crochet in the round is to learn how to do a magic ring, and I have a very good tutorial on that. I'll be linking this down below for you guys as well. So you just learned 11 common mistakes in crochet and how to avoid them. Now remember that practice makes perfect. So go ahead and do some crochet. It will definitely brighten your day. If you want to work on some follow along tutorials, we have a lot on the Yarny channel, all suitable for beginners. Make sure to have a look. Otherwise, we have this nice octopus pattern that is super great for beginners wanting to practice reading patterns on our Yarny website. Check it out, the link will be down below. As always, before you go, please make sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching, see you soon!